what do you say? You want to see my secret? Hello, Insiders Army. Your resident Abby is here for a major Bray Theory teaser for Abby's window tomorrow. So, after watching the swap match for what feels like the hundredth time this morning, a little light bulb went off in my head while I was watching that verbal interaction between cult leader Bray and Braun Strowman. So, I believe that cult leader Bray has been trapped in the fun house but on the other side of the door. I think all the characters are. But even though he's trapped, he's aware of what the Fiend is doing. Think about what he said. He said that he was rotting in an endless pit, looking through my own eyes, not able to control my body or anything it does. So Bray is seeing this story unfolding through his own eyes, but he has no ability to change the narrative or the outcome. But why? I'm going to tell you why. Because... The Fiend is in control. He's the one that allowed cult leader Bray to come forward. And that's why Bray said during that match, he said, I'm not going back. He doesn't want to disappear. He doesn't want to let the Fiend have that control back. And that's why at the end of that match, you see Braun come up from the swamp and go back down. And then you see cult leader Bray come up from the swamp and go back down. And then what do you get? We get the Fiend at the end. Fiend is letting you know, I got this. This is my show. I'm controlling everything that goes on here. That's why I think Bray wanted Braun to join him. If Braun joined him, maybe they could defeat the Fiend together and be, as Bray said, be like gods. Bray kept saying that Braun needed him. You need me. We need to do this together. But in reality, I think it's the other way around. I think Bray needed Braun to come home so that Bray could remain in power and keep the Fiend at bay. Keep the Fiend downtrodden. Keep cult leader Bray as the dominant voice, the dominant personality that's come forward. Braun was a threat to the Fiend. That's why Bray called him a weapon. A weapon that he can use to keep the Fiend quiet. Just like Abby used to. But Abby isn't a part of Bray anymore. He needs somebody else to help him defeat the Fiend, to help him. I think of Funhouse Bray as kind of like the Fiend's Dr. Jekyll. He's blinded by the Fiend's power. He has the illusion of control, but he really doesn't have any. The Fiend has committed this ultimate possession. He's in control of everything. He decides who comes forward, which personality comes forward, how long they're going to come forward for, what they're going to come forward for. And then once they run their mouths too much, kind of like Ramblin' Rabbit does, or do anything to try to fight the Fiend off, like Bray trying to recruit Braun, they get silenced, they get pulled back down into the pit. Who was the one person that the Fiend always obeyed? Abby. And we've been through this before. Abby was always the dominant voice in his head, and when she was gone, that's when we saw the Fiend emerge. Up until that point, it was Abby. It was all about Abby. And here's another point. <clears throat> Funhouse Bray and the Fiend are the same entity. We all know that this, you know, this entire storyline has had those religious connections. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper into that. So Funhouse Bray and the Fiend are actually the same entity. Each one is aware of the overall goal that this is, the overall storyline, and each one is aware of what the other one is doing. Think about it this way, go into these religious parallels. Think about the devil. Devil's not going to lure you in by exposing his true self right up front. He's going to appear happy and inviting and just like Funhouse Bray is. Oh, we're all safe here. We can all be together in the Funhouse. It's going to be great. And then when you go through that door and you let him in, that's when you see his true form, which is the fiend. So they're each aware of what the other one is doing. Bray is the, Funhouse Bray is the advertisement. He's the one that controls Ramblin' Rabbit. He's the one that talks to the lantern. He's the one in the Funhouse. He is the poster. He's the advertisement. He's the one that's luring people in. Once you let him in, then you get to meet the fiend. 
but the fiend lives on the other side of the door. Bray lives in the fun house. Abandon all hope, ye who exit here. That's where the fiend lives. That's when you truly enter hell, just like Cena did, and live out your own nightmares. So why do it this way? Because Bray can't turn people. The fiend is using Bray to soften them up. Whichever version of Bray is going to mess with their head the most. For example, for Braun Strowman, it was cult leader Bray. Down the road where he fights somebody else, he may come out as another version of Bray. We don't know what we're going to get. But my theory is that Funhouse Bray and The Fiend are the same entity. Both in control. Both aware of the overall story. The Fiend allows these personalities to come forward to use them as weapons. Bray lures them in. The Fiend uses them. So we will delve deeper into that on Abby's window tomorrow. I just wanted to give you that little teaser and I will see all of you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I love you guys and we'll see you soon.